But uh, welcome to Banner Bunch. How are y'all doing this morning? So there's standard agenda. I'm going to introduce everybody on the team, put some names to faces, faces to names. Then we're going to talk about job submission, which is a Everyone just cheers, right? Yay. Yay. Actually, I, I like talking about job submission because it's an area I think we could always use a little bit of clarity. It's always a little fuzzy on some people know their own little space of it, but it's always good to have a little bit more clarity on it. And then we'll have our usual open forum after we're done training on job submission. You can ask any question you want, and we can dive deeper into any of the areas. And, uh, it'll be your turn. So, without further ado, we are your banner bunch. Uh, we've got Kimmy, Mark, uh, Tyler is actually out on vacation today, Teresa, Maury, Carl, uh, Lena's back in the office, Catherine, uh, myself, I'm Gabe, and Michael is actually at a conference today. So, what is job submission? I mean, what is a job? It's a name that's or it's a term that's kind of thrown around a little bit, but I'd like to provide a little bit of clarity as I usually like to do, and just make sure we've all got the same definitions for this one. And this is what we get into it. So a job is just a program. It's uh, an algorithm. It's a set of instructions we can give the database, and it'll just do something. That's pretty much it. It's just a set of instructions, uh, but it comes in two different flavors. Jobs can either change data in the system or they don't change data. So a report is one of those ones that doesn't change data. A report just looks at the database, grabs up a whole bunch of stuff, and then reports it back to you in hopefully a readable format. It might condense some things, it might make a summary of information that's out there in the database, but it's just showing you what exists out there in data. Now, a job that does make changes that we call a process. A process will go out and actually, based on whatever criteria we give it or business process we're doing, will actually make changes to information in the system. And that's really the key difference between a report and a process. Does it change data or does it not? Job, report, process, we kind of use these terms all interchangeably, so it can get a little confusing. But that's really all it comes down to. They're all jobs. They either change data or they don't. And you can usually tell if a job is a process or a report just by looking at the name of it. And I'll kind of show that as we go. The third character in the name would either be an R or a P, and that's usually correct. I like the word usually. <laughs> I have to use the word usually because can you correct me if I say it? No, 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 not a correction. Just a, don't be surprised. Sometimes, if the report actually does something. sometimes the name is not perfect. The other thing you kind of think about here at Lynn Benton, uh, in our banner instance, is there's two different ways to run jobs in our, in our system. The baseline way, which is GJA, PCTL, I've heard it called GJAP Paddle before. It's kind of a weird name. What do you call it? GJAP Job Paddle. submission. Job submission. Yeah. Um, I actually didn't know the name of this form because I, I've always been used to just typing in the name of the job that I want in banner and it'll just take you straight there to put your parameters and run it. The other way here at Ben is kind of our own special uh, homegrown way we call it Schwartz. Any of the jobs that we've invented here on this campus, we actually invented our own job submission system for them. Uh, the jobs don't cross over versus baseline versus Schwartz, so you have to kind of know which direction you're going with things, and it's pretty confusing. Uh, someday, I'd like to get to a point where all of our net new jobs are actually all run through GDAP calendars based on job submission. We're just not quite there yet. And then I'm going to go ahead and go through both of these so that it's a little less confusing because just talking about it, you can't quite see it. So let's go ahead and just jump right in. So in Banner, you can always get your job submission down here for baseline, or you can get to Schwartz over here. And really, the instructions that you've got for the jobs that you're running might take you one place or the other. I'm going to go ahead and just run through the baseline way first, and then we'll come back to the, the 
move that way, the shortest way. So GJAP cattle, this is baseline. You can get to a list of all the jobs and processes that we have available to us, and there are hundreds of them. Usually you know what job you want to run though. So you could either type the name of the job in here, and I actually have a job that I chose last night to run. You can type in SHR, IAGE, and some IPEG report, uh, and page down into it, and it'll pull up all the information. Or if you want to, you can just type it in here, SHR, IAGE. It'll go straight there. Now within here, there's three different blocks, and you kind of want to go walk through them every time you run a job. How you want to get your output, your printer control, what parameters you want to run the job for, and then you can actually save the parameter set if you have different types of parameters that you run the job for, so you don't always have to remember what they all are. Because this is actually a fairly simple job for parameters. Sometimes they've got a dozen or more. Now printer control. There's different ways you can get your output. I'll, I'll make a review of this at the end here, so I'll kind of skim over a couple of different ways you can get output. Um, one of the ways I like to do this is just database. I want to make sure you know what that is. Database just means that I'm not going to go out and get my output. I'm not going to put it into a printer. I'm just going to actually view my output inside paper. One thing to remember at the end of this is a submit time. Have you ever used this? Do you ever use the submit thing? You can actually tell Banner, don't run the job right now. Run it tonight at 6 p.m. or something like that. Uh, it takes military time and there's a little note down at the bottom. It's hour, hour, colon, uh, minute, minute. But if you've never used this, you probably never will. And then you can go down into this. Now these are pretty much canned. You don't have a lot of control over this, but you do have control over what values go into them. And what's important here is to read whether it's required or optional. Many times the, the field doesn't actually require to run the job. They just say optional and, and you don't have to put a value in there. But if it does say required, you have to put something in there. So you have to know what it is you're running this job for. This one tells me it needs a term and it's required. And I can only put in one term. I can't put in multiple terms for this job. And you can type in the code that you know, like 201603. Or if you weren't quite sure what to put in there, you can always click on values. It'll bring up all the terms that I can choose from. So I'll run this for, for the current term, 1603. Next one down is required. I could put in multiple SIP codes if I want. But if I want to do it for all, it actually has more instructions down here. Put in a percent and it'll just grab all SIP codes when it runs this job. Next one is optional, so I'm just going to do a blank. And the one at the bottom is a required report format. And I don't know what number three means, but it tells me down here at the bottom. If I put a one in there, it'll give me a hard copy. If I put a two, it'll give me a web upload file. If I put in a three, it'll do both for me. I'm just going to leave a three because that was the default that was in here. And then I'm going to ask the bottom. You control page down through these different blocks or next block. Now here I can just hit save and it'll submit the job. Or I can actually save the parameter sets and give it a name. You know, whatever I want to type. And then next time I come in here, I can put that parameter name in here. When I control page down, all this information is saved for me. I'm right back up. I won't have to make any changes. I usually only use that, that name, uh, that, that save with the parameter set, when I'm running the same job over and over and over, I don't want to go through and put in the parameters again. It can be very useful, uh, or it could be just, it just kind of depends on how you're running jobs. And then I'll submit it. Oh, I have to put a description. And at this point, if you put a submit time, don't put a hold button. Don't click on the hold at the bottom because it goes in no man's land. Yeah, I would recommend never using hold. It basically says forget everything I just told you and mm -hmm. it doesn't do anything. 
Yeah, I actually didn't need to figure out where it was. <laughs> So I've submitted a job. The job is actually running against the database where it's already finished. Um, we have a net new form where you can actually see the status of that. So the SWI. You can go back into the form and do the options. No, show me. Go back into JJAP. Go to options. Yes. Nope, it's right here as well. You can type in the name Squirps, or you can just click on this. And it'll tell you whether or not it's running. Oh, it's not going to and once that says complete, I can actually get my output. Okay, now it's running. I don't think I've ever found a baseline way to see this information. It's really useful to see if the job is running or not. We can see it on our end on the database behind the scenes, but I don't know if there's a baseline way to see if the job's completed or not. All right, so it is run. I can either click view screen output because I had chosen database as my printer. No. What happened there? Is it what? Well, it may have been that the shell script is not set up to actually allow me to do that. That's right. You try to see the output. Or um, go away. The printer. I can review my job output here. This is the baseline way because I had gone through a, a LBCC Schwartz way, it probably didn't come up. This is the baseline way to see your output. If you didn't know your job number, you can always click right here and it'll show you a list of all the jobs you've ever run. Okay. And it brings up my report. You can see right here. I can even print from here, or I believe if I go to options, I have an option to open this up in a web browser where I can print it or copy and paste, that sort of thing. Um, one thing to remember, if you're doing using the database, uh, this can get full over time, especially if you're running you know, multiple jobs a day. So occasionally it's, it's worth deleting your output. And there's a, a place where you can do that. You just delete output and say, okay, and then it will appear in the So I kind of ran through that real quick. It was a baseline way to run a job. Let's go look at the Schwartz way, and then we'll come back and we'll kind of play with both of them, and I'll show you the different ways to get output. So Schwartz, you can either type Schwartz at the top, or you can click on this button on the right. And going here, we'll actually show you a list of all the jobs that we've built here at Linbetton that you have access to. I actually have access to a lot of them, so I've got a huge list here, but your list may be different, or, or bigger or smaller. And remember I had said the third character will tell you whether it's a process or a report. So you can see a lot of these, whoops, if you click on it, it takes you straight to it. A lot of these have P's, sometimes it's an R. That's the difference between this is a process, this is a report in general. Everybody runs it all out, or most of the people in here run it all out. All so out? Uh-huh. This that one right one here? There. Yeah. Is there any you want to use that for an example? I was going to use GWR oh. for is there any corporate data in there? Or? No. It's all budget stuff. I don't know what it looks like. Oh, okay. Do you yeah, want to walk me through no, the parameters? Go for it. No, you might not be set up. <laughs> okay. I don't know how it's run. I didn't practice this one last night. The one I was looking for was uh, both. Uh, function key. Are you going to run our new GWI? Yeah. It's got the mass stuff. GWR Dirt's a, a, a report that we've built recently that helps us compare two different records in Banner to see if it's a, a duplicate or not. So we can oh, click on that. Last night I ran this with two IDs, so the IDs are still in there. It saved the last time the parameters that I ran the last time. And so I want to compare this ID. It gives me some instructions on what to put in here. I click next. It gives me instructions again. It wants another ID. And I've already entered this. And then it cho you can choose where your output goes. I had chose database when I was in the baseline way. That's also called screen. You chose screen. It's the same thing right here. You view your output inside banner. Um, out here, I'm going to choose no print. What that means is I don't want it to print to paper. I don't want it to 
be viewable with a banner. I want to actually just go out and get the file from somewhere. We'll say next. You choose when to run it. Similar to that submit time, you can choose to run it immediately. You can choose to run it some other time. Uh, if I choose to run it tonight, what time does that run? It's probably 11.15. 10.15, 11.15. It's late at night. But I want to run this right now. Gives me a review of what I had just chosen, and then I hit submit. And again, we can always check our job status and kind of watch for it to run. <laughs> yeah, this, this job runs pretty quick. And it's done. Now, if I click view screen, am I going to be able to see anything? I chose no friend. No, you should do it. So it says, yeah. yeah, you can't see it here. But I can get to it by going and getting the file. So we use a tool called Core FTP. And also understand that when you're in Schwartz, just because it offers you a data, um, a screen option does not mean that that job is actually set up mm -hmm. for a screen option. So you might choose it, and if it hasn't been set up behind the scenes to do that, you're going to get that same error because the process is not going to do it. Right. But if you say no print, you still have files behind the scene. It's just not going to bring things for you into this part to see them. Yeah, and if these never behave in a way you don't expect, let us know. We, we can look at them, especially on the Schwartz end where we've built them ourselves. We've got to figure out what's wrong with them. We may have missed something at some point. So, Core FTP. Who's used Core FTP? Who loves Core FTP? <laughs> Kevin does. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, who knows what FTP is in general? Actually. We'll start for Jane. Jane gets a stone. Yeah. <laughs> it stands for File Transfer Protocol. All it really means is I've got files on one computer and I want to put those files on another. That's all it really is. So on the right hand, or when you're looking at this, on the left hand side of the screen is your computer, the hardware you're sitting in front of. And on the right hand side of the screen, is whatever other computer you're looking at. Here we're looking at the banner computers. Now is that not computers. customizable by machine? So mm -hmm. you could have a top to bottom. It depends on how your core FTP is set up. So if yours doesn't look like this, don't freak out. It's because of how your core FTP is set up. And pay attention to what you have in those little boxes where those highlights are, the blue are. Yep. Because you could be opening them wherever you set your cursor and open stuff, you could be changing where you're sitting. So be cautious of, be aware of, of what you're doing in these areas. Right, and, and Lori, when she sets these up on your computers, she's got a set of defaults that you typically put on computers. Um, but that doesn't mean you're locked into all of that. Here I'm actually looking at DevL. I've made a change here to the location of the other computer that I'm looking at. And there's also a filter up here. They use this asterisk as a wild card. I'm looking for any file that has my name in it, W-I-L-L-I-N-G. You can see that I ran this a whole bunch of times last night. So when you run something, it always attaches your name to it. Uh, that's a default that Lori sets up. Not, <laughs> Say, it doesn't happen. Usually, usually. <laughs> <laughs> if you went out and downloaded correct if you had to do some of our defaults that you usually set up, it would it'll oh, just have a star there. Yeah, did you? I mean when you run a job in Schwartz when you run a process? Yeah. Okay. And that's a usually. Mm -hmm. That's a usual. Right. So if I wanted to look just for GWR dirt, I can actually change this filter up here and I pull back all the ones that I have access to. It also shows you the date and time that it, it uh, completed. So we want to see the one for today, which is right here. Right down here. So I can either drag this over here and drop it on my desktop and open it there. Uh, a lot of people, I think, just view it directly from here. And I believe there's a setting that'll tell it to open up in your default, uh, whatever you open that CSV in. Uh, sometimes it just uses Notepad, and that might be a setting that you can change. Yeah, but we can go and see this report where I compared Carl and myself, and we can tell that you know, looking at the information that we're not the same person. That's that's what that report's for. Mm -hmm. I do now. 
I live here. <laughs> <laughs> so Core FTP is just a tool to go get the files that were outputted by that job. And you choose no print to get those. You don't have to choose no print to get those. The files are always there. Right. Yeah, the files, yeah. files always output. There's different file types. There's .lis, which is a text format file, so you can look at it in Notepad or Word or some other text editor. .csv means comma separated values. It means it's a text document that's got commas in between each field, but you can view it in Excel, which is really helpful. The PDF, we all know Adobe Acrobat, you can get PDF out, this sort of thing. There's also .cat, because they have TXT. So let's see, where are we at? I've shown you once a baseline way of running a job. I've shown you once how to run it in Schwartz. Let's go ahead and wait. Let's kind of walk through the different ways that you can get your output. Uh, we looked at core FTP once, we can run through that again. Uh, we looked at database or the screen where you can view that information. There's also the printer option, which I bet most people actually use. So if I went back to that job that I had run, the baseline one. In this printer, not only can I choose no print or database, but I can choose to have it go directly from banner to one of the printers. Um, and these are all set up. I'll blow this up a little bit. So it's hard to read, there's a lot in here. There's printers in our office, there's printers in the registrar's office, and they're set up specifically to receive data from the banner. Uh, if you really want to have paper, you would want to choose one of these. Or if you need to give something to the Benton Center, and mm -hmm. you don't want to send it in campus mail, you can send it to the Benton Center printer, as long as they understand it's coming. And as long as they know it's coming, you bet. And you know what's on that information. Right. Um, well, I don't even need to know it's coming. One of the printers is on. <laughs> <laughs> and if we ever need to set up a new printer for one of these, we send that information to Mark and you can work with Russ and then we can set up. Uh, that's not that big of a deal. One that we do want to point out though is PDF print. So PDF print is it's kind of a weird mix of no print and I want to get my file out of core FTP. A PDF, if you want something from out of Adobe, you have to print it to a PDF to a file. It's kind of a weird way to say it, but uh, we have to do the same thing when we're in Word or any other area of banner. We choose a PDF printer. So if you want your report to come out readable in Adobe, you would choose this. And let's walk through that. And what catches me up in this is mm -hmm. that when you're choosing PDF print, you're not choosing a form. You're choosing a printer. Right. It's so that's the point where I always catch up on it. I'll catch up mustard. Ah. Sorry. <laughs> One, One more, more cup of coffee, coffee and I'll be there. Okay. <laughs> you can always watch and wait for it to finish. So, um, because I'm in a development instance, I'm talking to Carl because uh, in production, you choose PDF print and it just comes out. You can go into part to take your file. Uh, in any of our development instances, we actually pull back the print jobs. We have to request to have them released. So that's what Carl's doing right now. All right. So now that the job's printed, we can go out to Core FTP. If we refresh it, it's not GW worker. To change my filter, I'll just look for anything that I've ever run. And the name of that job was S H R I A G E. There should be a bunch of start up here. Do a do the quick on date on the front time. I could. You can sort these, can't you? Yes, sir. You just had it with her. I just sorted it backwards. Okay. There you go. This is the one I just ran. And I still have my text file, my dot LIS if I wanted to look at that. But I also have a PDF and I can open this up. And it should bring up Adobe Acrobat. And this is another piece that has to, you have to have help getting set up because it doesn't come automatically with Core FTP unless Lori is doing that now. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you can see your things in PDF and then print out the one or two pages out of the thousand pages that will come out on the printer and use it that way. I know finance is using PDF quite a bit because a lot of their reports are just huge. 
and they only use the one page on each channel. So rather than printing the entire thing, you know, they just print a PDF, put it in their file, and they grab the one last page and print out on paper. Or if you have to, I mean, how much do you create it now? Now that you're using this, not a lot. It kind of depends on what you're going to use it for. No, oh, I didn't see that. Sorry, guys. I'm a big fan of PDF print uh, and going paper. Are there any things you'd like to see me walk through again? I know it can be confusing. I threw a lot at you. Otherwise, this is about how far it is. I mean, it's knowing the difference between a process and a report. Why am I running this job? And then how to run it, how to get your output. It's all job submissions really about. So, are the, the jobs that you have reports mm -hmm. that are in stores, are they in the the baseline one? Is that what not right now. They will be. No, they will be eventually. They are not now. So if I went here and typed in a Schwartz job, like GWR Dirt, it's not going to bring anything up because we haven't done the baseline setup on our end. We've done the setup in our own homegrown system for all these net new jobs. Uh, that's a transition we're going to have to make. And when we actually start to move, make that transition, we'll let you guys know because I think it'd be really cool to just run it there. And then see your parameters in the baseline way, and then run it. And then everything will be consistent. It won't be as confusing having two different systems. Good question. Jane. All my documentation from the person that I had before me said that when you run a report, you should always check the save parameter set button, even though you don't put a name on it. Mm -hmm. So I'm hearing that you don't need to do that. No, you have to, or you can't get any further through. Oh, that. you do have to always check that. Yes. Okay, so that is true. Regardless of whether you really are going to associate with the name of something. Right. So when, when Gabe put in test, so he mm -hmm. could run another job next, PHP calc or something, and it's going to get rid of all these parameters. Right. Um, mm -hmm. You could be running something over and over and over and changing parameters. You could still go back to test and get whatever you did at that point. Right. So if you needed to prove down the road, or maybe you have something you run only once a year for a certain way, in a certain way, and you want annual reporting for something, you could create an annual reporting, right. save the set of parameters, mm -hmm. and go back to it, and then run things monthly throughout the rest of the year or something. Right. Just to run a job, you don't have to hit this checkbox. This just saves the parameters. Yeah, that's what I was in. asking. My my notes say that you always have, you have to just submit it. it. Yeah. You have to you submit have to it, but you don't have to save the parameter set. You don't have to put that. You, you don't, don't have, have to, to put this checkbox right here. I mean, you save them, you don't have to you name don't it. it, but just stays in there for right. the next time you run it. If I put in 2016.02 and go down here, and I save the parameter set, and I don't put anything in, that's next fine. time I come in, this will become my default. Yeah, it'll right. automatically put those right. ones in. But if you don't click that save parameter and just hit save, it'll just it'll process. still process. Okay. It, it'll yeah. just run. Right. Okay. So now if I go in again, 2016.02 is there. Yeah. I go down. But if I go in as test, the one that I did name, 2603 is there. So it just gives you the ability to control default values that are in here. Right. It's and not essential to running it. It's just a matter of what you want to say. That yeah, right. You want to say and this one might not be a great example. It's only changed one parameter. But if you've got a job that has 30 parameters, you have to remember what every single one of them are every time you run the job. It's worth saving it or even saving a few different versions of it so that you can just remember to run that one name. So show us how to run it without hitting the save parameter sure. button. Go down. Go down. Here, I'll come in without even the name of the parameter. So just my defaults. And I just hit, whoops, I just hit save. And it submits it. Yeah, okay. Thank you. Yeah. That's, now I understand why we use it. Yeah, the only thing down there is so you block. can save your default. You need to be in that bottom block to submit it. Yes. Oh, to okay. save it. So it's either click that button or go to the top and hit the save button. Right, that's good clarification. You do have to have your cursor down in this block okay. to save and submit your job. Right. And because of this right here, that's it. Yeah. You don't have to use anything else down here, and we don't recommend you use hold. But if you're down there, you just click yeah, box and do the same thing. Yeah. It may just be the person before you wanted to make sure that when they were doing their own work, they always had the last 
last time they ran the job right. was what that safe frame Yeah, was. and I actually understand why now because nine times out of 10, you're going to want the, the next one to tweak just like one or two lines. Mm -hmm. But I always thought it was like you had to do it no matter what. So it's interesting to know that you don't. A good question for this crew because I don't know the answer to this. Schwartz saves the last parameter set that I ran it with, but is there a way to save different parameter sets like this? We yeah. don't have that ability at Schwartz. Yeah. It just saves the last time I ran the job, whatever I ran with, that will that's what it's for. Right? So I'm going to do the job on Good question. Yeah. It can make your life easier. I, I know I used to run hundreds of jobs for the missions office. And, Having different sets for different types of tape loads and whatnot can help out quite a bit. Yeah, I'm using it for um, academic standards. So mm -hmm. it's like, right. when do I want to use it and how do I want to use it? So this totally clears that up. Other questions? And I think we're kind of at the point where it doesn't have to be about job submission. We can really ask anything. Is it super clear? <laughs> Are you going to play around with it a little bit when you get back? Can you go over a little bit where you would find the documentation on what the different fields are? Actually, that's awesome. I was going to do that and I forgot. Thank you, Jane. So what if you don't know what the job is doing? You don't know what the parameters mean and the instructions aren't really that clear. It's a baseline job. There's awesome documentation out in the band office. Oops. Come out here to our groups and docs. And for example, banner students, there's a report or a process or something that I want to run that I'm not quite sure about it. Or even if I want to go out and learn all about everything else that I could run, there's usually a reports handbook. If you come out here, it'll tell you anything and everything about any report you want. So like, I wanted to find out about the SARM TNT, which is not a report. <laughs> it's the Electronic App Verify Load Process. This is how they take applications that were submitted on the web and they push it into SARMs and, and other areas of banner. I can go to this and it will tell me anything and everything that I want to know about that job. All the way down to what Jane was saying, what each one of the parameters does, whether or not it's required, what the default values are. Using these reports handbooks can be extremely powerful for you, especially as you're learning banner. And if you're not able to find a report handbook or, or a description of one of the jobs you're looking for, you can always ask us and we can help either find it on the agency hub or figure out why it's not documented so well and get you some straight answers. But these handbooks are awesome. They're Pretty amazing. Once you get used to looking at them and searching, like I just searched for this one job, it brought the information up. It took me half a minute to do that. I think they even have like a, a sample output. Most times, that uh, doesn't look like they have one for that. I'm on to the next job, but sometimes they do, and they'll actually show you what it's going to look like on the output. It might be above it. Sometimes. No, not that one. Great question. Thank you for reminding me. Now, if you're not in baseline and you're actually playing on the Schwartz side of things, we have tried to be good about creating a details for you. So when you go to Schwartz, there's a little details column. And if it's marked with a Y, then that means there's actually something within it. So if we were to highlight one of those, cancel out of that. Highlight one and hit the details, see details at the bottom. Now I do not guarantee you that that is actually actually up to date, but it could give you some information on the job itself. Right. It can be very helpful. You'll notice that they're not as common. <laughs> so if you want to run a Schwartz job or you're not sure what it does or anything, you want to work with the programmers because they can actually trace through the code and figure out exactly what it's doing and why. Usually we have notes behind the scenes that help us. Usually. We like that one. Do you have a question? Any other questions? We have a new feature that we'll be covering regarding documentation and helping. Oh yeah, what's that? Is that from your work in ESM? Ooh. 
So right now, if you want online help, you go right here and it takes you to the Illusion Hub. Uh, technically, that's not baseline. There's a lot of help that Vanna provides, but we've never installed behind the scenes. That would tell you everything about the baseline form that you're in. Uh, sounds like Mark's been doing uh, a lot of research into this, and that should be available in the near future, or someday in the future. And we'll let you know when that becomes available, because that also can be useful for finding out how some of these things work. Um, Mark's been doing a lot of work on this in this past week, and we're getting pretty excited that it might actually be implemented in the future. What is ESM? ESM is Elucian Solution Manager. It's a tool on our side that helps us make sure that our databases are up to date, that uh, they're set up in a way that Elucian expects, that uh, it helps us turn on new tools like single sign on and banner non. Uh, it, it will be a level up for the entire campus so we have that installed. It's something Mark's been working on for about a year and a half. The plat that, that, that platform <coughs> is, is going to be what Elucian is going to use across the board for all of their products eventually which is why it's not called banner manager or anything like that they just started with banner because that was the biggest piece that everybody wanted was the most important one to get out there first. Mm -hmm. so what it will do is i'm using it in two ways one uh, i just finished tying it into our standby uh, environments and later on today i should be able Using my fingers should, should be able to actually use it to update our standby server um, to what production is now. And if that's successful, I'll be tying that into our current production server, the one that everybody else uses, and start running that probably next week. Mm -hmm. um, the other side of that is the new system that we're building to migrate over into what is now called Banner 9. Everybody's been calling it Banner 9, Banner XE, whatever. Um, that system has been built, ESM is tied into it, and it is now, um, I'm now troubleshooting various pickups as it is installing banner into that system. Um, hopefully, <laughs> but hopefully, my timeline, personally, I think the day when I talk about this is that we'll have it up and running by oh, sometime either this term or next and start doing some serious testing next term and summer and start rolling out new look of banner involved on the new system. Now, the projects we've been working on and communicating for the past year or so, we're gonna start paying off in the next six months to nine months to a year and then in the future. Uh, the, the painful baseline, baseline new banner that we've been going through We'll start making things easier to upgrade Banner 9, get new tools put in place like the reworks. We still have many more projects to go. We're not nearly done. So, so, uh, ESM makes single sign on more realistic. Uh, and that's something that we're going to be working on just as soon as ESM's up and running. Uh, Banner 9 is a leap forward in the way that it looks and feels and behaves. Uh, it won't feel like error streams from the 1990s. It'll actually feel like an application that was developed after the turn of the century. Um, and all the functionality we love in Banner 8 is going to be there. It's just going to look a heck of a lot better, behave a lot better. Uh, it starts to open up a whole lot of other possibilities, like having a mobile app that allows you to get into Banner or degree work, or any of those other tools that we run alongside all that. Uh, turning on ISSM, the International Student Scholarship Management Tool, is part of that. It's a pretty exciting time in my opinion for Banner. For a lot of the things we've been just dedicated to for the past year, year and a half more, are going to start actually showing some real fruit. It's a good project update. Other yeah. questions? Because we've got about yeah, five more minutes if you want. Or if there are no more questions, you can shut her down. These recordings will be available online at the YouTube page. Uh, I, Slacked off last month and have not put the employee self service one up, but I want to do that at the same time because I just need some fall. I'll really trouble now. Show, show, show them what Cascade looks like right now. No. <laughs> uh, if you ever need to get a hold of us, there's our, our email address. It gets the whole team. And uh, if you want to have a short link to our YouTube site where all the other 
recordings of these sessions are at. There's a, a bit.ly link right there. Thank you for coming. And let us know if you have ideas for future banner bunches. <laughs> Thank you.